Praise God. I'm Brother Thomas Lee Harris III, and this is the Sunday Guerrilla Men's Bible Study. Today we're reading from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 8, and I'm going to get right into it. Um, the book's only 13 verses, so I, I have to read the entire chapter. 1 Corinthians, chapter 8. Now concerning things offered to idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but charity edifies. If anyone thinks he knows anything, he knows nothing yet as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, this one is known by God. Therefore, concerning the eating of things offered to idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world, and there is no other God but one. For even if there are so-called idols, whether in heaven or on earth, as there may be gods with a little g, and many lords spelled with a little l, yet for us there is one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we for him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things, and through whom we live. However, there is not in everyone that knowledge. For some with the conscience of idols, until now, eat as a thing offered to an idol. And their conscience being weak is defiled. But food does not commend us to God. For neither if we eat are we better, nor if we do not eat are we worse. But beware, lest somehow this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to those who are weak. For if anyone sees you who have knowledge eating in an idol's temple, will, you, will not the conscience of him who is weak be encouraged to eat those things offered to idols? And because of your knowledge shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died. But when you thus sin against the brethren and wound their conscience, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never again eat meat. At least I make my brother stumble. Wow. Okay. When I read the word, I ask God to take, to take the text and reveal it to me in today's context. In today's, bring it up to 2010. So when I first read, you hear about eating and idols. And I'm like, what does that got to do with me, Lord? I'm not eating in no temple and eating this and... Uh, you know, meat sacrifice. But God revealed to me, he's talking about what I do in public. And this, the scripture, the verse, verse 9 says, But beware, at least somehow, this liberty, this freedom of yours, become a stumbling block to those who are weak. And that freedom, that liberty what he's talking about is knowledge of God. You know, once we come to faith in Jesus, God begins to reveal himself to us. And we know how to go to God and get forgiveness because Christ died for us. So as we journey on in life and I make mistakes, I immediately call upon the blood, right? It says Christ died for us and took the sins of the world. But this text was revealed to me that not everyone that we meet every day knows how to go get forgiveness from Christ. Some people are not saved yet. So what God revealed to me also is that the scripture in today's text isn't going and eating meat sacrificed by idols but it's about when I go out into public and say I have, I'm still fighting with a smoking, you know, smoking complex or, or habit. I can't get rid of that. It says in verse 9, but beware, at least somehow this liberty of yours becomes a stumbling block to those who are weak. Weak meaning who are unbelievers. For if anyone sees you who have knowledge, knowledge of God, eating in the temple, so let's replace that, smoking, will not the conscience of him who is an unbeliever be encouraged to smoke? 
And then it goes on to say, in the le verse 11, And because of your knowledge shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died. You see, I'm going, anything that I struggle with, where it is smoking, drinking, any of these habits that I've still not broken and I'm struggling with, that I go to Christ daily, right? Oh, God, I came up short today. Forgive me. There's those out there who struggle with the same habit. But when they see me going to church, they think, oh, he's a hypocrite. Because you know how the, the world sees us, oh, we go to church, we got to be perfect. And I bear witness, and believers out there bear witness. We're far from perfect. What makes us perfect is the blood of Christ. And every day, as we eat more of the word, we get better and better. And these habits begin to wash away. You know, we don't get saved and perfect overnight. You know, we, all our habits just fall away. If anyone tells you that, he's a liar. Right? He's a liar. I want to peek behind that veil and see what you're doing in the dark. But I'm telling you, God, be, these, these habits begin to fall away. As I begin to wash myself, and it says, as I yield my physical to God and I transform my mind, I get better and more perfect, perfect looking because I'm perfecting my mind with the word of God. So I'm, so I'm imitating the word more every day. But in the beginning, some things are, are still the same. But I, I'm seeking, but when I diligently see God every day, the habits fall away. So when I go out into public, what this chapter revealed to me, if I go out into public, I have to be conscious of those who are unbelievers and know that I am now calling myself a follower of Christ. Because the habit that I take in public may become a stumbling block to them. And that scripture in verse 11 and 12, it says, Because of your knowledge shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died. But when you thus sin against the brethren and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. You see, they might never come to Christ because of me bringing my habit in public and they say, oh, you hypocrites, I'm not even going to look in that church. I'm not even going to pick up this Bible. Right? They haven't come to the knowledge of forgiveness is in here. Because the world has been taught for so long, oh, no, perfection is in here. You got to say, though, he's got to be perfect. So this, this chapter was, was shown to me that I have to be, as a church member, conscious of my actions in public. Because people are watching. And that 11 and 12 says, that sin is on me. People watching me, and I'm still hanging out. Right? I'm going to the club Saturday night, drunk and sloppy. And then I'm coming on the altar in the church, um, laid out, begging God for forgiveness. God is merciful. He deals with me. But what about the person in the club that didn't understand about going to the altar. They had never been there. And a matter of fact, they refused to go there because they see you drunk in the club with them. Right? Oh, he ain't drunk with me. Ah, church is a hypocrite. That's what the scripture's saying. Don't let our habit become a stumbling block to a non-believer to the point where they never come to believe. Because that soul can be accounted to me. I can get charged with that sin. I have to represent this, this word mindfully. And the habits that I struggle with, let me struggle in the, at home in the closet where nobody sees. Where it's just me and God. 
But I can't just go out and broadcast. I that's what the scripture says. I can't use that liberty because that freedom could cause one to stumble and never come to the knowledge of God. And that sin could be charged to me. So whatever I do in public, when there's non-believers looking, I have to be mindful of that. I have to be mindful of that. Don't put stumbling blocks because of my weakness, my struggle. Struggle in my house. Struggle in your closet. But when we go out in public, be mindful that we represent the king of kings. Amen.